Hello and welcome again to part two. That is questions 11 to 20 of 100 of the B1 questions, which you'll be taking in exactly a week from today. They're quite small, but I'll zoom in um, as much as possible. So the first one, number 11, is gametes. What they are, gametes are sex cells, examples of sperm and egg cell in animals, and you have the pollen and ovum in plants. Pollen obviously is the male uh, gamete and ovum is a female gamete. And then he said to outline the stages of mitosis very briefly, you have interphase which is the resting stage but doubling of chromosomes and copying also actually happens at that stage. And then you have prophase, uh, P, a pair, uh, spindle a pair or pair up, pair up of chromosomes here. And then metaphase, meet in the middle. And then anaphase apart, pull apart, chromosomes pull apart to the edge of the um, uh, uh, cell. And then here a telophase, T for two, they split into two. So each is surrounded by a nuclear, uh, the membrane of the nucleus. And then for cytokinesis, I just say, remember cytoplasm. So cytoplasm with the cell membrane formed around each of the cell membrane and um, their new nucleus that has been created and then you have two you have two daughter cells produced here i've just tried to put 46 chromosome is a start you end up with two daughter cells that are exactly like uh, the parent cell in terms of the number of chromosomes and then you have 46 and 46. Now, the next question says to outline the stages of meiosis. Meiosis, I said meiosis, repeat again. And I put two there. What that means, you have interphase one, prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one, cytokinesis one, and the process repeats itself. There is interphase, but it's really, really short and quick. And then you have prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two, and cytokinesis two. So as a very quick overview, you start with 46 chromosome one, and then you end up with 46, 46 chromosome, and then the process happens all over again two, you end up with 23, 20, 23, 23, 23, four daughter cells. They are haploid cells. Now, mitosis is like a sexual reproduction because at the end, two daughter cells are produced, which are exactly like the parent cell that they are formed from. Then it says, what are stem cells? They are unspecialized cells, which means they can grow into any tissue, organ, or even a full organism. And I hope this is well zoomed so that you can see clearly Question 16 says, what are meristems? Meristems are stem cells in plants. They keep dividing and they are found in the tips of roots. Now, if we just end this um, section, this uh, group of questions with adult stem cells, these can only be produced in, um, in very specific, they can only produce very specific cells. For example, they can be found in the bone marrow of a human being and they can used, be used to replace damaged uh, blood cells or they can be used to replace damaged skin cells if they are, skin, uh, if they are adult stem cells for, for replacing skin cells. In the, on, the, on the other hand, embryonic stem cells they can, they can be uh, actually uh, differentiated to reproduce any type of cell. Now, stem cell is highly, highly used in, in, in the field of medicine. It can be made under certain conditions to differentiate into certain specialized cells, which can be used to replace damaged cells or organs. And question 19 talks about diffusion rate to state the factors which affect diffusion. Diffusion being movement of particles from where you have a lot high concentration to where you have less or low concentration. There's usually a down, down from high to low concentration down the concentration gradient. So it's affected by temperature. The hotter it is, the more particles have energy, obviously, the more the collision happens, so the more um, diffusion happens, uh, happens. And then density of the particles. The particles that are diffusing, if you have a lot of it, they would be forced to diffuse. For instance, in the alveoli in the lungs, you, ha you have it, the blood that's surrounding the alveoli is very, very high in carbohydrates. Whereas the blood inside the alveoli of the lung is not high in carbohydrates. So naturally, there's a concentration gradient. So carbo carbon di sorry, did I say carbohydrate? Carbon dioxide. You have a high amount of carbon dioxide in the blood surrounding the alveoli. 
therefore it naturally diffuses from the blood into the alveoli so that the carbon dioxide is exhaled to the outside i was using that as example then the, diff the medium of diffusion now in the medium of diffusion itself you're going to have some molecules that are going to want to try and stop the diffusing particles from moving moving across so if you have less of those particles there then the diffusing particles would flow across easily so that's what you mean by the medium but if you have a lot of molecules that are going to kind of work against the or try and stop the diffusing particles from flowing through then that could slow down the rate of diffusion in terms of the concentration gradient i just explained it with what happened in the alveoli of the lungs when they try and get rid of uh, diffusion when, and when they try and get rid of carbon dioxide from the blood and lastly, question 20 says, what is osmosis? Osmosis is the diffusion of water particles across a semi-permeable membrane. Across a semi-permeable membrane. Spell my across correctly. So semi-permeable membrane means it would allow certain particles to pass through and certain particles will not be allowed to pass through. That is 20, 11 to 20. The next one is going to be 21 to 30. Remember, it's a, it's a, it's a collection of 100 questions. This is a checklist for all the topics that are covered in the B1 paper you will be taking in exactly a week from today. Keep watching.